Hi guys, this is William and welcome to the second video where we'll be discussing background animations. So in this section we will demonstrate how to add animations to your backgrounds. Not only does this provide visual clues to players if there's puzzles involved, but it also livens up your backgrounds. From a requirement perspective, you need your animations to be in a picture format as individual animated frames, right? So in my example here, I've got a little animation of a fish. You can see they're red, the red fish swimming across the fish tank. And what you'll also notice is that the files are sequentially numbered, right? So this is important when it comes to importing your animations. Here we have fish tank one, fish tank two, fish tank three. And this just allows Visionaire to incorporate all the animated frames in the correct order when we import it. The first thing is accompanying this project, you will get the project files. You will also get the documentation for this exercise included in that. So we will load an existing file and choose open me first. Right. The way that the animations work is each animation will be its own object in the scene. So to do this I will go to my scene area and I will click on hallway and here I will create my animated object. So first we need to create our animated object and I will call this fish tank swim. Now we need to animate our object or we need to add our animated frames. To do so we need to ensure that the fish tank object is selected and then click on the animations tab right here. And we will now add our animations. So to add an animation, I need to click on this button, create new entry. And I will also call this fish tank swim. And now we need to load in our animated frames, the frames that we see right here. So to do that, I'm going to click on this load frame sequence button. I'm then going to browse to my animations and I'm going to click on that first item right here. Now when I do this I will get a separate import window where I need to choose certain parameters. So the first thing is we need to define how the transparency will be applied to these images. So if I choose alpha channel the transparency will be defined by the alpha channel of the imported images. If I pick color the transparency is defined by a specific color that you choose or you can choose none so there's no transparency to be defined. So I will just leave everything as is for now and click OK. So now we a few things occurred, right? The first thing is that our animation frames are now displayed in our animated window right here. Additionally, we can see that we have a new object that was added right there, my fish tank swim, right? Now let's just focus on the bottom area. Here I have certain buttons where I can preview my animation. So I'm going to click on this play button and I can see my little fish is swimming across the screen. But it's a bit too fast. So we've got options to edit how this animation behaves. If you click on the properties button right there. Now this will give you access to several animation related properties. First the pause pauses function defines the amount of pause between each frame. So I'm going to set this to 50 and go back to my preview and play it again. You see it's much slower now which is great. This is what we want. I'm going to go back to my parameters. Just on the other items here we have loops which defines how many times the animation is replayed. If I tick infinite this means the animation will play uh, infinitely uh, so it will continually loop right uh, also note that if I tick this my loop turns to zero because there's no loop per se it just continually loop there's no loop amount play forward will play the animation from from the start to the end play backward will reverse the order of animation and this is handy if you have a character that maybe 
picks up an object, so they bend down and then they uh, stand back up. It's the same animation, but it's just reversed. <clears throat> Play in random order. This just plays the keyframes in a random order. We have random loop pause. This sets that there will be a pause between the animations. So when an animation has stopped playing, there will be a pause. Set pause for each frame. This, this enforces a pause for each frame. The position of animation changes vertically. You can refer to the documentation for more detail here. It just affects how the, the object is drawn in relation to the character um, uh, vertically, right? Then we have the start action after animation is finished. This action is started when the last loop of the animation is finished. Note that if you have infinite option ticked, then this action will not be called for animations because the animation will never finish. So now we're finished with our settings here. I'm happy with how it looks. So we're going to go to our canvas area. So let's now place our object. I'm going to ensure that my fish tank swim is selected. I'm going to choose the place tool and I'm just going to move it over my fish tank area. So it might be a bit of a trial and error to get it to perfectly line up. But for this exercise, I'm just going to leave it like this. So now, to if I play this scene like so, nothing is happening here. No animation is playing. And the reason is we need to tell Visionaire to play the animation. Uh, now we have two options here. We can create an action part that starts the animation where something occurs within a scene. Or we can also set this to be a default animation. So first we'll look at the default animation. To do so, click on the make sure that's selected. Go to your properties page. And here we have a drop down called default animations. I'm going to click and choose my fish tank swim. Now, this means that the animation will play as soon as the scene starts. Let's see that in action. And there we go. I can see my little fishy The animation has started playing. Right, and because I chose infinite under the animations here, it continually plays. And of course, the very last step is always ensure to give your object a object name. So we will now use the exact same animation, but we will trigger our animation when our user clicks on the fish tank object, when our user uses the fish tank object, right? So to do that, we need to create a, a new action part. But first, I just want to remove the default animation because I don't want it to play by default. I want it to play when my character uses the use icon on the fish tank. So now we need to define specific parameters because this is becoming a usable object. The first thing we need to do is we do need to set the position. And this defines where the character will walk to when we use this uh, fish tank. Now to do that, you need to click on this little icon right here. And then click. It will add a cursor there. And this is the spot that your character will walk to when you interact with this object. I click OK. Then obviously we also need to set the object area. And this defines the interactable area of this object. And you do this by clicking on the button right there and then clicking and dragging like I just did. So now the mouse cursor, when we click use in this area, Visionaire will know that we are trying to interact with this object and then it will play the necessary animation. Right. So now let's create an action part. So when a user uses the fish tank, the fish will swim. So I am going to do that under this actions area of my object right here. And I'm going to click add new action. Now here I have several commands. The execution type is execute command on object. That is left click. I'm going to choose when the command use occurs. What do I need to do? Create a new entry, create a new action part. And what we want here is we want animation 
play, hide and emotion. So when I use this object, play an emotion. What animation do we want to play? The fish tank swim. Right? So then it will play that animation. Now, what I also just want to do is I don't want it to play infinitely. I want this to play every time I use it. So I'm going to go back to animations and untick infinite. So now let's run this and see how it looks. So I'm going to use, this is my use icon, use that. And then my fish swims across. I'm going to use that again. There we go. Now you can see that the animation is offset by, uh, by a few um, pixels. That's just something you need to troubleshoot by selecting it and moving it, nudging it appropriately until it matches perfectly. But for this exercise, we're just going to leave it as is, right? So that is great. One last quick example of uh, the animation property play in random order. Just quickly, I want to show you uh, how where this would be useful. So I'm going to create a new object called fire animation. I am going to name it fire as well. Always remember to name your objects. I am going to go to animations. And I'm going to create a new animation and call it fire animation. So really what we're doing, we're doing exactly now what we did with the fish tank. So I'm going a bit faster here. But just revert back to the earlier uh, minutes where we discussed this. So I'm going to choose my fire. Now here I can see I've got four frames with, with different uh, animated items, right? Here the flame is bigger, there it's smaller. I'm just going to choose the first one. And here I'm going to choose the alpha channel as the transparency. So now, if I play my frame, my animation, I can see it's quite fast. So let's go change that. I'm going to change the pause to 200. And that looks a lot better. But now I want to add some variety. So I'm going to choose play in random order. And if I go back here, now it plays my frames in a random order. So with a fire, that's where something like this would be useful. It's maybe not immediately obvious, but, but this is a good example. And once again, all we need to do is I can choose my object and move it by choosing that tool, the place tool, moving it, placing it there. And then I also want to just set my default animation. Right. And let's give it a go. There we go. So it disappeared now, and the reason why it disappeared was because it played the animation once. If I go back to animations and to my properties, I can see loops one. So it plays the four frames and then it's done. Let's tick infinite so that it continually plays. And there you go. So if I use this, got the little fish and I've got my fire here. Now you can add uh, the object border here. You can add interactions um, and so on. So I hope this video was useful to you guys. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.